All right, today's question comes from Boop Cheese. Did you ever have the issue of not knowing how to come up with code? I've been teaching myself for about a year and a half, originally steering myself towards the MERN stack for almost pure JS, and I can totally understand the language for the most part, but I can't think of the code required to flesh something out. I've followed some of your guides, some of JS30 from Westboss, and numerous others, and as a function or object method is written out, it makes perfect sense, but I can never come up with these things on my own. Then when it comes to Googling, I can't ever get proper results due to wording, or at least that's my guess as to why. All right, so this is actually a really good question, so I'm kind of excited to answer this one. The problem that Boop Cheese is facing here is actually a very common problem, and probably one of the most important things you have to get over as a developer. So what this probably most likely stems from in most people's cases is watching a lot of tutorials and following a lot of guides, but not spending enough time uh, creating things on your own. And you have to have that proper balance between the two. And it's just like, um, just like anything else, you have to exercise your ability to come up with code. You have to exercise your ability to solve problems yourself without the help of others. Now, blogs, guides, tutorials, they all have their place, but it's also important to make sure you set aside the time to practice on your own. So when I was learning, I clearly remember having this problem. I remember facing this problem, and it was, it, the second I overcame this problem was when I felt a huge weight come off of my shoulders, and the world just seemed to open up with infinite possibilities of what I could do with programming. So I'm going to go over what I remember doing to overcome this hump. And the first thing that I remember doing is code challenges. Now, the thing about code challenges that's really interesting is that most of the time, code challenges are very small problems. And they can be very difficult or very easy, but they're usually very small problems. So you have not much to focus on. You know exactly what the focus is. You don't have to think about 20 things at once. You have a small focus, and it's up to you to write the code necessary to solve the problem. And see, this is really good because when you write a big program, essentially what you're doing is doing tons and tons of tiny code challenges. You're putting, you're breaking down the program into code challenges, and then you're solving each individual code challenge until you have a full piece of software. So it's actually been a while since I've been on Code Wars, but this was the website I used to use back in the day. So I'm on Code Wars dashboard right now, and you can see you can select the language you um, you want to focus on. And in my case, I focus mostly on JavaScript, but I also selected these other languages as well because I was practicing in those as well. And what you can do is select your language, and you can train... And you can see there's like a score. If I go to my profile, it, it's sort of like a social media website for code challenges. They have all these different features. I'm not entirely familiar with all of them, but there are quite a few. You can link your GitHub and your Twitter and your LinkedIn, which is good because potential uh, employer might come across your profile because this is kind of a popular website. But if I go over here and click Kata, um, I can go scroll down this list and select different code challenges. And you can see there are, you can filter by tags. And this Q is actually a difficulty level. And 8Q, I believe, is the easiest. And it goes all the way down to 1Q, which is the most difficult. So you can, you can kind of work your way all the way to the most difficult level, which is actually a very, very good exercise to getting better at um, this particular problem that Boop Cheese is having. So that was, uh, that was CodeWars.com, and I'm going to put a link in the description for you. Now let's move on to the next point I wanted to make. The next point is do beginner practice projects. Now I'm going to put a link in the description. Look for this link. It's going to give a, just an enormous amount of resources for coming up with beginner project ideas. Now here's the thing about beginner projects. Um, you're going to look through the list, and there's going to be a ton of things where you look at it and you're like, man, this doesn't seem like a beginner level project. That's probably the one that you want to do because that means you're not familiar with that particular topic. So what you want to do is just go through and try to, as often as possible, maybe once or twice a week, do a beginner level project, and don't look up tutorials on how to do that specifically. Just try to do it yourself, and when you come over a small problem, Google how to do that. But overall, beginner level projects are one of the most important things you can do because you're building real programs and you're practicing your ability to solve problems on your own. All right, so the next point, branch out. So get different perspectives. And what I mean by this is when I was first starting off programming, I was learning Python and I would get stuck and I wouldn't know what to code. And again, I had your a similar problem as you. I not only didn't know what to code, but when I did know what to code, I didn't know how to code it. And so when I got into this rut, I just decided to branch out and start trying other things. I started getting into web development. I started getting into Android development and I started getting into game development. 
And I did all three of these things for extended periods of time, usually I think about four months each. After doing that, I had gained a wider perspective on programming as a whole. I learned a lot of new terms. I learned a lot of new concepts. And after doing that, when I went back to Python, things just made a lot more sense. So the way that I like to put it is the more you code and practice, the more intuitive it becomes. It's kind of like muscle memory, but it does take time. And the final thing that I'm going to offer you in terms of advice on how to get better at this is to watch people code. They need to be talking about their thought process as they write the code. So watching speed coding videos, sometimes they just write the code and they're talking about something completely else. Watch a speed coding video or a coding video in general where they're talking about what they're coding and why they're writing the code that they're writing. Because what that helps you do is understand their thought process. Having that thought process is a huge part of being a developer in general. So I hope that answers your question and I hope everyone that's watching was able to benefit from this video. It takes work and it's worth it in the end. But if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.